Apologize. Yeah, I messaged you, but it said that you were offline. Goodness. All right. Um, I I don't really do. I don't. Uh, I'm not up on my Discord messages or anything like that. Okay. Well, yeah, we're just going to be doing a, um, a a voice a voice interview if that's okay with you, or we can just hop into yeah, video. Yeah. All right. Yeah, whatever works for you. Well, first off, uh, welcome, and also, uh, how are you doing, man? Before we jump into it. I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, well, you know, we got the YouTube ban going on and that's kind of enraging, but you yeah, know, it is what it is. Yeah. I ended up uh, dealing with something very similar. They took down a three minute video of me uh, teaching people how to install a flash uh, or, or a, a forward assist is pretty infuriating. And uh, I did. <laughs> you watch... can't even post. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you can't really do any assembly videos on YouTube these days yeah, much at all. I had like 15. I had to remove them all. I saw the, the latest episode and uh, there was like 30 minutes left and I went to go and find it and it was gone. And then I went to your Twitter and I noticed that they, uh, that they, ended up Oh, you're that. talking about our stream. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was, it was pretty infuriating. And uh, I saw the, I think the, the relevant bits and uh, it's bullshit. Uh, but uh, goodness. So, before we jump into any sort of like uh, specific firearm topic, I'm wondering how exactly did you get into firearms? And I think it was recent just based on watching, uh, you know, your streams. So how did you get into it and how um, do you feel about it now? Wasn't, uh, it wasn't super, it's within the last three years, really. Yeah. Uh, my, my brother was, uh, was military and he was really into guns. Yeah. And so I actually never shot a gun until I was, 23 yeah. uh and he had he had a scar light so a scar light was actually the first gun i ever shot yeah. which was pretty cool that was yeah. a pretty fun one and um and i just didn't i wasn't anti-gun i just didn't really care that much it, it wasn't something that captured my interest um but i i didn't know enough i didn't know a lot about guns and so a lot of the common sense gun control yeah. and a rhetoric appealed to me because i yeah. just I just didn't know enough, you know, and it's sound, stopping bad people from having guns to a layman sounds like a good idea. Yeah. So over time, I learned more about them. But what really accelerated my interest in guns and self-defense was the reaction to the Parkland shooting. Yeah. And when David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez and the rest of them came out and, and were talking about uh, we need to ban this, we need to ban that, we need to, to we need to take people's guns in some cases uh, that prompted me to realize i need to learn more about this if they're saying i shouldn't have these things and i shouldn't be able to defend myself i should learn more about this stuff yeah. so that prompted me to get a concealed carry permit that prompted me to develop more skills and more understanding of how to operate firearms and a better understanding of the law surrounding firearms and more than any issue i know steven crowder says this i think he's exactly right yeah normally i don't like issues to be people who understand it and people who don't yeah but i think this one is really that that anybody who understands firearms and the laws around firearms is generally not on the common sense bandwagon yeah so and, and I've, since then i've been radicalized you know yeah. now oh, it's a uh, ban the now it's repeal the nfa now it's machine guns for all you know yeah no absolutely yeah and i'm and i'm very similar to you i was uh, like I live in Vegas and we had that the Bundy Ranch incident and I was kind of like a Bernie bro loser and well Bernie didn't exist at the time but I was like just completely lambasting yeah. these guys and I made a lot of claims about them and guns and just you know country culture that I obviously didn't know anything about and even in six did a video pretty much you know explaining like these guys were innocent the you know the judge let them off uh, you know Obama was wrong and all that and uh, you know five or six years ago uh, you know a buddy took me out shooting and and I just, I got addicted to guns. I, I have a lot of guns and um, I, I don't know how many you have. I, I wouldn't ask that, but what's your favorite firearm that, that you've like purchased? That's, that's a good question. If I could pick one out of my safe for, well, it's hard to say because I yeah. couldn't concealed carry it and concealed carry <laughs> is important to me. Um, but if it's not for, if it's, if it's something I'm keeping outside of concealed carry purposes, um, my CZ Scorpion is probably my favorite gun that I have. It's nice. uh it's uh it's in pistol format so who knows joe might be coming for the, yeah. the brace that's on that thing very soon yeah. but um i love the i love i just love the little sub guns uh, and yeah. i love um it just it's it's great for your car it's great for bedside it's great for just general security purposes yeah. and more than any other gun i have uh, the thing just runs flawlessly and whether it's me now that i have a little bit more experience or whether it's a new shooter yeah. it's very comfortable and it's it's dead on accurate, at, you know, at good defensive ranges. Even a new shooter can shoot it really well. 
Yeah. And um, and it's it's just a fun. I, I just love that gun. So for yeah. me, it's it's that CZ Scorpion. Yeah, that's a that's a really popular one. I think those are those are kind of pricey, and I'm sure they've gone up in value after the whole uh, you know COVID nonsense. I haven't looked recently. Back when I bought it a few years ago, and it was about eight hundred, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I'm probably thinking of something else. Yeah, that's excellent. And, and you you mentioned this earlier, so this is probably a good segue. I, I've I've glanced at some of your tweets uh, today, actually. And what what yeah. is your take on this this draconian, in my opinion, draconian uh, push to you know make it impossible to own any sort of firearm from the Biden administration? Well, I haven't done a deep dive into what Biden is proposing. I know that they're taking a look at pistol braces because, as Merrick Garland said today, that makes your your AR pistol more concealable. And I know we're all carrying yeah. AR pistols inside the waistband, so yeah. he's going to crack down on that. <laughs> uh, it's just absurd stuff. And I know they, they want to crack down on these uh, so-called ghost gun manufacturers or yeah. you know, 80% kits, basically. Yeah. Um, Again, so what I saw today and what I want to probably talk about in video uh, this weekend or maybe on the stream um, is, again, it's just a classic example of the people who are begging for more regulation have no understanding of what they're talking about to the point. And I don't know if you saw this tweet. It, what made me laugh the most today is you have this ABC News piece talking about how Biden's going to crack down on guns and they're explaining what pistol braces are. Yeah. And the demo that they have in the video, indeed the thumbnail for ABC News's story on YouTube, <laughs> is an AR pistol with what? A vertical foregrip. I saw it. I yeah, which gun know. guys will know is a no-no. That's it. That's it. assuming it's not registered. Which why would you have the brace on it if it if yeah. it was registered? So assuming it's not, that is any other weapon or legally classified as any other weapon, a possession of which is worthy of ten years in prison. And the news, the news stories running it have no idea what they're even talking about to the point that they're going to put in an already illegal configuration up on the screen and lecture you about how this weapon shouldn't be on the streets. Well, it can't be already. Yeah. They have no idea what they're talking about. And do you think the ATF is going to go to ABC News studios and uh, break down the door and shoot their dogs? No, of no, course not. No, they're, they're the protected people of society. Of course not. It's unbelievable. It, this, this is what I want to talk. I, I know for gun people, the minutia of, well, what kind of plastic is on or, or for not for non gun people. So the layman yeah. who, who doesn't really care about guns, they don't really care about what piece of plastic is on the gun or not. But but if if, if I can, <laughs> the thing that's most important to communicate to them to me is, is the people trying to regulate this stuff fundamentally don't understand it. So whether you're a yeah. gun guy or not, we shouldn't be having federal regulation of anything by people who fundamentally don't understand the thing. No. Talk about how bad that is, whether you're living in Boulder, Colorado, and they want to do their city ban. Okay. At least you might be able to move out yeah. to avoid the nonsense. You talk about doing this federally. That's the irony. If, if you are, if, if, if either you or me, if we have that, that firearm configuration that was in that news piece, that's, that's uh, grounds for, 10 years in prison, $10,000 fine, whatever. Yeah, they'll, they'll visit us for sure because you have the wrong opinions. Yeah. So it, it, I just, I, I really hope that even non-gun people can look at what's, what's happening here and realize you don't want to set precedent for this sort of crackdown on any sort of property, not just yeah. guns, anything. They'll come for your assault car if yeah. you give them this uh this leeway well it appears that they, they they want to be moving in that direction uh you know the the, the transportation admin uh, guy uh pete Buttigieg or putty cuck or whatever his stupid name is a you know, wants, plug, I yeah, think. yeah, yeah that, that's more yeah. that's more correct yeah he, he wants to make it more difficult for certain drivers to be on the road uh clearly targeting blue collar worker type americans and you know you, you you're absolutely correct you know the people who are antagonistic towards people who own guns and want gun rights to be expanded they just fundamentally do not understand at any level level about anything in, in regards to firearms like like i keep hearing over and over again that it's as easy as buying candy it's like well have you even bothered yeah. to buy a firearm like there's a you know arduous process so, you know before covid it was like a you know 30 minutes long if you're unlucky but at least out here but uh it, it, it takes time and they 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 you know you have to you know surrender quite a bit of information and they, they just they don't understand and uh it, it's just frustrating to to look at all the comments and the tweets and all the nonsense on on twitter um i i'm at the point where i'm just throwing up my hands and i'm so sick of it and i'm just at peace with the fact that i'm just I'm not going to comply with any of it and I'm not going to take it anymore. Um, you know, it's just like, this is the hill that I'm going to die on. Uh, cause I'm not going to surrender my property and I'm not going to comply with the, with this, these bullshit laws. 
Um, well, I, I agree that it is a worthy hill to die on. Uh, and I agree that the principle is very important. The one thing that I would uh, that I would urge everyone to do is is network with your neighbors and network with your community. Yeah. Because we, you know what happens if you're the guy whose door they decide to kick. That, that yeah. doesn't end well. Um, and what you want is, is strong communities that are prepared to defend themselves from such intrusion. Yeah. So we really, we really do have to network with each other. They're counting on us being isolated and not having friends and neighborhoods and families to back us up. Yeah. And for them, it doesn't necessarily go well when that happens either. I mean, the Waco was, for example, was not a great success for anybody. It was a horrible tragedy all yeah, around, absolutely. but there is, there is a reason why Waco was a standoff for 50 some days. And that's yeah. because there was some level of organization. And uh, to be clear, obviously I'm not advocating that anybody attack FBI or ATF agents or anything, but if yeah. these people want to come and raid communities in the same fashion, because they have pistol braces you know, or whatever firearm configuration, um, that to me is is an offense that is an aggression that should be defended against yeah so i have no problem with people thinking exactly the way that you are yeah and and it seems like we're at a point where we're about to revisit that type of scenario once again and we were really close when the bundy standoff occurred out here in my neck of the woods and um and, and i feel that a lot more people are probably going to join in efforts to resist the the federal government, especially yeah. that 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 is you know basically an offshoot of the the failed Obama era, um, and it just like the thing is just like I'm sick and t like I communicate with some of the people in your Discord channel. I know you don't have much mm -hmm. to do with it, but I've I've taken some of the people and became friends with them. But there's some individuals well, that are uh, antagonistic towards you know our rights and stuff, and. There's just no there are antagonists them. of plenty no, in there. Just, yeah. it, it appears that there's just it's impossible to reach them. And I know uh, your your co-host Blonde, she she feels you know very black pilled, very demoralized, mm -hmm. and it, it and it seems like it's it's a pointless effort to to continue to you know pro promote our ideas. How do you think we sh you know that the people who are pro freedom should be moving forward in a direction that 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 gets us the results that we want, which is just being left the fuck alone. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I, but I think how, how you achieve that is exactly what um, we were talking about, and that's yeah. what Blonde and I end up talking about a lot. Is uh, you commit the ultimate sin against the federal government, which of course is moving to a remote location and trying to yep. be left alone, <laughs> trying to be by yourself. That will get you rated a hundred percent, ironically. Um, no, but here I, I think uh, to push back against the black pilling a little bit. Um, I have found in my general daily life, totally independent of YouTube, just, you know, yeah. doing the activities around town that I do and talking to friends and friends of friends, uh, whether it's coronavirus stuff or gun stuff or any of these things, I, I, I don't try to go aggressively on people about politics because, yeah. you know, we all get plenty of that these days. But yeah. when I get to know a person, I, I like to just feel them out a little bit, like just kind of plant a question or two at them, like a, a pretty soft or subtle one and see how they respond. And almost universally, people are, are more of our perspective or are pretty open to it or are some perspective of, yeah, a lot of government intrusion has gone too far. Yeah. I think that there are just so many forces, whether it's school or whether it's work or certain social forces in their friend groups, people of this perspective are just so beaten down that they're afraid to say what they really think. And yeah. so that's one thing that I just in my everyday life, I, tr I try to cultivate just a little bit, like just plant those seeds of, you know, it's okay to hold these opinions and yeah. it's, it's okay to say them vocally to the people yeah. in power. And when you do that, um, you know, maybe they, maybe they push back at their place of work or in school or not, but you also make the sort of friendships that we're talking about where, yeah, Maybe you guys do decide to uh, form a, a neighborhood organization that agrees to defend each other's rights. Maybe and do a whole bunch of other things. It's like old school neighborhood watch stuff. Yeah. This isn't even like I feel like I'm uh, like I'm plotting some evil plan or something. What I'm talking <laughs> about is neighbors having their back and that having each other's backs. Yeah, I'm talking about you know you see a criminal patrolling the neighborhood, we let each other know and we're vigilant against that sort of thing. Yeah. And I don't care if it's a if it's some hoodlum 
uh, breaking into garages and stealing stuff or a federal agent kicking down doors to violate our rights. Neighbors need to stick together regardless, no matter who it is. So I think the best way to fight back is to uh, is to act as locally as possible and form those friendship groups and just alliances with people immediately around you. And I've been bad about that. You know, I, I like if you're like me, you, lo- you love being left alone. I'm not yeah. the most neighborly guy, yeah. but in the last year I've tried to be, you know, like bake the, bake the neighbors some Christmas cookies, that kind yeah. of stuff. Just become friendly with them, establish trust. And the more you do that pretty soon, it's hard for anyone to come into your area and really mess up your neighborhood because you guys know each other, you have a plan yeah. and you're prepared for that sort of intrusion. Yeah. And then I feel like that, that, uh, that sort of, uh, you know, those, th- those types of threats are, you know, they're, they're, they're coming because of the way this, uh, Derek Chauvin trial is going. And- oh man. At this point, I'm worried that I'm too close to Minneapolis and I'm a thousand miles away. <laughs> yeah. Well, over here in uh, Vegas, they, they had some pretty violent rioting. One of the officers was shot in the head and he survived. Oh, that's right. Unfortunately, yeah. he's, uh, going to be in a vegetative state the rest of his life. Oh my uh, God. You know, among other things. Uh, you know, businesses were destroyed, uh, all, all kinds of craziness. Um, and of course, there's somebody that I personally know. Um, th- I didn't go- make it to the news, but she was reporting that she was walking down the street and uh, these people were calling her expletive names of uh, racial variety. And I'm like, oh, I bet Matt and Blonde would love this. But they didn't, you know, they didn't go to the press or anything. But I saw it and I was yeah. very, I was almost compelled to say, like, this is probably fake. gun violence is that the same thing as somebody coming to murder you with a firearm we don't have a murder problem in this state period yeah they try to portray us as though we do anyway to, to your question um you no know, i at least where i live i don't feel like i'm otherized or demonized for being into guns yeah uh even and even on the on the internet i don't really think so either but of course the this the circles that i travel in are are very pro-gun yeah um so not yeah, like gun shaming stuff uh, is not a part of my life. In fact, one of the things I'm most proud of, because like I said, I, I didn't get really into it until roughly three years ago. Yeah. And a lot of listeners of the channel were people who really got me into the details and understanding of, of you know, all the technical stuff that you, that isn't necessarily obvious. And so I've been able to pass that knowledge off to other people who yeah. maybe listen to the channel and weren't big gun people, but they're like, Hey, I, I hear you talking about this stuff. How would I get started um, learning about it? Or if I want to pick up my first gun, what would you recommend? Or if I want to do this, what would you say? And it's just very cool. I always go back to those guys who taught me yeah. and I want to make sure that they know, like, you know, just so you know, the torch has been passed. Yeah. Circle of life is complete. You know, it, it's, it's very gratifying to me to be able to pass that knowledge off but I hope it's gratifying to them too. So I would actually say it's the opposite that like yeah. gun culture has been very rewarding uh, yeah. to me. Yeah. And, and it does appear to be a lot of fun. Like there's people like I have buddies that are like super far left, but they're not super obnoxious and I've taken them out shooting and they loved it. They probably enjoyed it. Well, everybody way more does. Than me. And everybody and, does. And it's, just, it's so like fascinating to see people who would otherwise be generally antagonistic towards somebody like a Kyle Rittenhouse or uh, like a popular gun YouTuber. They yeah. had a total blast. You would never think that they would have any sort of negative uh, emotions towards firearms. Um, it, it's fascinating to see. I absolutely love to see it. Goodness. Um, what else was I going to ask you? Uh, is there any specific firearm related case that you're following closely and that, that you, like you're invested well, in? Um, there are a couple, the Rittenhouse one is, is obvious, um, uh, how they're going to try to build a murder case against that kid when honestly, I'm so impressed with his discipline. Um, I mean, he, he exhausted all options he had before shooting on these people who were attacking him and he managed to shoot only the people who were attacking him. Yeah. So, uh, I, I can't imagine how they possibly get a murder conviction on that kid uh, because I can't imagine a much more clear-cut and disciplined case of self-defense but the more uh subtle one or the lesser known one that i've been watching is uh the case of um of michael strickland in in portland yeah you know that one yeah i'm familiar with that uh, robert barnes was discussing it briefly and i think yeah. you guys have discussed it in passing or i think you did an interview with strickland is that correct yeah strickland was on our show um maybe like in november or some yeah. sometime around it like last few months how's he and- doing 
How's that going? I haven't heard an update from him. I know that that they're trying to get the case heard by the Supreme Court, which is probably a long shot. He's exhausted all his options in Oregon. So he's gone all the way through the Oregon um, state court system, through their Supreme Court. But it, just in case people aren't familiar, general a summary is he was filming protests in Portland in the, sum, in the summer of 2016 downtown. And a mob of Antifa activists uh, advanced on him. And he backed off, backed off, backed off for like a block as these yeah. people continue to pursue him. And then they start surrounding him. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't until they actually get behind him that he draws his his Glock that he's carrying and he just says, get back. And funny, what happens when he did that? They all left him alone. Mm. So what you had was a best case scenario in, in such a circumstance, which is people were advancing on him, uh, intent on doing him harm. He drew, he did not fire, and nobody got hurt. Yeah. And there, there was absolutely that that neutralized the situation he's out now they arrested him and they charged him with i forget how many un, like a, a ridiculous uh yeah. list of felonies basically for pointing a gun at people when in fact these people were advancing on him threatening bodily harm among other things um but that case in my mind what he did was perfectly exercise his second amendment rights and his rights to self-defense just like Rittenhouse did except for in this case you had the benefit of not even actually having to pull the trigger which I'm not saying what ha the people what happened to the people who were attacking Rittenhouse at some level they, they they deserved what they got because they were attacking him but you'd like to have a situation where nobody is dead in the end and that's exactly yeah. what happened with Michael Strickland yet he is a felon uh, as far as the Oregon state judicial system is concerned. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, he, so he's without his rights now. And of course his reputation is ruined. He does videography work. And uh, anytime he wants to get hired to film a wedding or, you know, whatever he might be doing, you, you Google his name and he's an evil gunman who, had, who tried to commit a mass shooting, that kind of stuff. So that uh, to me is a very important case to watch because that's a situation that really any of us could be in. Yeah, absolutely. You're my, you're minding your own business in a downtown urban. So you don't even have to be filming them. You could be walking around downtown Portland, downtown Minneapolis, downtown Seattle. You get on the wrong side of one of these mobs because you made the wrong step or looked at them the wrong way. And suddenly you may have to defend yourself in exactly the same way. Yeah, and that appears to be happening anyways. Innocent people who are just minding their own business while these uh, events are ongoing and they're getting violently attacked. Uh, Look at the McCloskeys like you yeah. referenced. They were just sitting at home. Yeah. Yeah, all, all the more reason to, uh, you know, uh, defend our rights because it's uh, that's I feel is the direction that they're going in there. They want to remove people's ability to defend themselves. They're going to remove the tools that we use to do it. And now with the with this push for red flag laws on a federal level on a massive scale, I think now our speech is going to be penalized and it'll be used against us to. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, Did um I didn't follow closely enough. Did Biden actually propose a law or is he just saying like in general, I support federal red flag uh from the things that i read from breaking 911 it appears to be that they're going to be proposing uh red flag guidelines that will be oh, uh, that states okay. would be able to utilize so they could implement it because oh uh, thank god i mean that sucks if you're in a blue state but you know yeah. well, and, and i'd I, rather and have that than unfortunately i am although it's a it's yeah. currently a free state but uh we don't know for how much longer uh, it's very unfortunate. And out of curiosity, I, I was watching, uh, I read a tweet from Razorfist, and he was responding to Ricada Law. And Ricada Law was saying that this man who appealed his case to the Supreme Court, I think as of like a few weeks ago uh, or a, a few days ago, the, the Supreme Court denied to hear this appeal. He is in prison because he killed uh, two young individuals. I think there were two young females. And they broke into his house, um, and he, he defended his home. He retreated to the basement, and uh, he killed them both. And I guess there's a, I guess there's a recording of him mocking the, the alleged victims in this case and, mm. um, and shooting them again while they're, they're down. But they Ugh. invaded his home, and now he's in prison, and it doesn't appear that he's going to be getting out uh, at any point in the near future. I was wondering – I forget oh. the name of this individual, but – uh, yeah, Razor Fist, Razor Fist had some choice words for it, and Ricardo Law did respond to it. I'm just wondering if I don't know the it. case. Yeah, no, I've I've no. That's the first time hearing of it. Yeah, he yeah he, they they invaded his home and he defended himself and allegedly he was standing over them mocking them and then he you know continued to shoot or yeah. something to that effect. Well, as far as the red flag stuff, we've already seen that be lethal too. Oh, there was yeah. the Maryland case, the guy who 
was killed by police when they attempted such a raid and yeah uh, uh and of course what's the precedent that you're setting it's just like you're saying if people think you are if people subjectively think you are a danger then your constitutional rights can be revoked without due process i mean that, that's that is a shredding of the bill of rights on multiple levels not just your second amendment rights and yeah people need to think carefully about this stuff but of course they won't because uh government is our lord and savior it can do no wrong if we yeah. just surrender <laughs> everything yeah, absolutely. to the feds my, they will take care of us my, my main contention would be the uniformity or, or the the application of the law will just not apply uniformly across all groups uh you know you have these these violent activists getting away with making credible threats of violence and they never get penalized violently rioting and they never get penalized being uh you know showing signs of mental distress that would lead someone to believe that they would commit a violent act with a firearm and I fear that they will never get penalized or punished the way somebody like me or you would for saying, you know, we should, you know, have our rights and, you know, our, our speech should not be fettered in any way, shape or form. Um, yeah, that, that, that just I, I can just imagine it now. Uh, I don't know why I feel like this is it's possible that, it, you know, this is the, the, the future for us. But, um, you know, like you, I don't want to be a, a downer about it. And I just impress upon everybody to just speak honestly, speak the truth at all times and. You know, don't come off as like some kind of weirdo gun <laughs> if such a thing exists. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can win people over, you know, like, you know, I'm sure you've experienced it just taking people. Yeah, you who, can. Uh, are you know, not, you know, totally stoked about guns. And then when they're shooting it, they're, they're behind it and they're having a blast. And I think I think there, there there's possibilities for people to change. And I've changed. I, and uh, I agree. And your show has, has certainly been, uh, you know, very influential, I, I think. To, to a point um it's just it's insanely funny you and blonde are, are hilarious and it's entertaining and it's also like super charming and uh i think it was the, the last episode you guys did uh there was a super chat where it's just like uh they're the the your fans are playing a game where they tell <laughs> you how to do your show and then hang on for dear life for as long as they can yeah that's kind of that's kind of a bit there are many yeah. bits in the chat one of the bits is like yeah t I, it, you know, if, if you're like me and you're <laughs> there's that and but if, if you're like me and you're a leave me alone type person yeah. um i i do not enjoy being told what to do or how yeah. to handle my business so that's yeah. and that's I'm, i admittedly that's a sensitive thing to me so even yeah. call in stream and elsewhere there have been times where people have kind of uh flirted with telling me what to do and and i I react. I, I should get better at uh, reacting more calmly to such things, but I just, I just hate, you know, people have their things. That's a pet peeve of mine. Don't yeah. tell me what to do. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, I'm, but that's I'm, the joke. I totally that's the joke, so 100 they push it. agree with you. I remember listening in on one of your uh, Wednesday calls a long time ago, and some guy was like suggesting you do this and do that. Like, okay, thanks, bye. You know, you just were not happy. Yeah, that, that was one you. of them. But <laughs> but actually, that caller is he's a he, he, we're still uh, we're still in touch, and he's yeah. still a, a good member of the community, and he was a really good sport about it. And that yeah. was one caller that I probably was a little bit unfair to. So yeah. I, I appreciated that he got back to me and assumed the best of intentions on my end, and of course, I, I did the same for him. And yeah. The relationship continues to this day. All right, man. Well, we're almost we're at the pretty much at that thirty minute mark. Just one yeah. last question. Something that I just I like to ask other people who make content and you know put themselves out there. Uh, like, what does like like your friends and family think about you having this large platform, having you know all these eyeballs pretty much on you and and blonde and having this this reach and pretty much building a, a genuine organic community. It's really really cool. And I was just wondering like what do the people in your life think and feel about that because you've been doing this for a long time i i've seen some of your old skag stuff like reacting to oh, like uh those video chat thingies and the omegle and it's like yeah. it's really funny like you're like a genuinely funny dude and you're able nice. to translate that to to this you know this uh, a show about politics politics is pretty boring for most but you guys make it great and i'm just wondering like what well, i appreciate family, that no no I'm, I'm being very sincere like i love the show yeah. i'm just wondering what, what does your family think like how do oh, my parents, react? my parents love it. Um, yeah, my parents are kind of the same sort of political perspective that I am or was my parents like Reagan, Reagan Democrats, you know, yeah. like mostly Democrat voters who might yeah. cross the aisle once in a while, but they've sort of become converted as I have. And so uh, my parents really enjoy it. And and they like to listen to the show. And honestly, it's sort of weird, because everybody else close in my life is sort of a product of the show. Like my yeah. my wife, it, my wife because she was a listener yeah. um 
I, I had a lot of like dead weight, lame friends in my yeah. life prior and blonde convinced me to cut dead weight and make better friends. And I have. So even for the friends that I have who maybe aren't directly through the show, I found them because of lessons I learned by doing the show. It's not an exaggeration to say that the show has absolutely reshaped my life in every personal way for the better. Yeah. So everybody who's kind of close to me is sort of a piece of that. Um, yeah. And it, 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 I wish it's, so, I, I don't know. Is it lame to say that the show is my life? But it no, kind of is. No, and I'm very, awesome. I'm very, I'm very proud of that. Yeah. And it's uh, cause it's, it was a risk to take at the time yeah. we, we made it happen and it's really worked out, but it's worked out beyond business ways, which is yeah. what the original risk was and into the personal life. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, there's the, pretty much everybody who's close to me is of some similar political persuasion. I don't have any like rabid leftist friends yeah, or I, leftist out, family members. I cut out most of them uh, and also trimmed off all that fat, all that dead weight. It's uh, been, uh, it's been really fantastic because i'm just at the point where i'm tired of being you know fettered in my speech uh holding back yeah. and i'm just hate surrounding myself with fake people and i reach out to other content creators and fortunately living in vegas a lot of like the best firearm companies are out here and yeah. it's just been a blast uh going through this transformation myself and um yeah and just i guess one last thing like how did you and blonde end up deciding to do the show for as long as you guys have because it's just i have to be real quick because i gotta hop off here i have another right, engagement buddy. but um but it, the, the short version is that blonde and I were both in the same situation. We were both two, like hobbyist YouTubers yeah. who had these kind of mediocre, but kind of dead end quote unquote real jobs yeah. that we knew were going nowhere. And we knew we couldn't really stay in because we wanted to talk about these sort of controversial issues. And so yeah. one day in uh, May, of, May or June of 2016, we're like, should we just, we just straight up quit our jobs and like try to make something <laughs> of this. And blonde, uh, blonde quit that day. And I did the right thing, and I did, I put in my two. Weeks. <laughs> That's how that happened. Sounds it was just right. right place, right time. People with some people with similar spots in their life, and it and it worked out. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Matt, uh, you've been incredibly generous with your time. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to be leaving a link in the description to your website, your YouTube, and your Twitter. Um, I guess the people listening on my channel, go ahead and check that out. Um, and I'll send you the the video, and I guess a, a raw audio format. I don't know if I caught the beginning of it the first like 10 minutes I'm kind of peeved about that but okay i actually have been recording on my end if you want it oh but yeah we can talk let's talk about, send me an email we'll talk about that offline excellent i appreciate it matt have a great day sure. take care man thanks a lot you as well peace out